Welcome to part two of our The One Rain series, everyone. This game was a thrill to create a group for with Stefan James, and we come up with a really solid group of characters that has a lot of great story potential, if I say so myself. But before we get to the episode, here's what's coming up in our call to action after the show. After the show, join us back here for some thoughts about the episode. We will also go over our standard of asking for reviews, as well as asking you to support us on Patreon. Um, and we will have a sneak peek of another bonus episode coming to our Patreon relatively soon. Uh, we do need your help in order to help cover the cost of the show, especially at this point in time. Um, you can head over to patreon.com slash character creation cast if you would like to check out the Patreon and... Um, take a look while listening to the episode we are about one third of the way to our goal for each month um so every little bit helps but in the meantime thank you so much for listening and enjoy the show episode of Character Creation Cast, Steph was creating a hobbit, James was creating a dwarf, Amelia was creating a man of Bree, and I was creating an elf of Linden. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. So after we've recorded our combat proficiencies, the next step is choosing distinctive features. So there should be right underneath combat proficiencies in your culture, distinctive features. And uh, for instance, for the dwarf, I get to choose two from this list, cunning, fierce, lordly, proud, secretive, stern, wary, or willful. Ooh. And distinctive features. I, it goes up at the tippy top under your name. Oh, under the thing that says features? Yeah. <laughs> so they, yeah, they're listed on page 67 in the book. Okay, thank you. And mechanically, distinctive features are useful because um, when making a skill check, if you can invoke a distinctive feature, like come up with a reason why your distinctive feature would impact your skill check, you get to make, uh, you get what's called inspiration, um, which is different in this game than in other games, but essentially it gives you an extra success die when spending hope. So normally when you spend a point of hope, you get one extra D6. But if you can invoke a distinctive feature, you get two. Okay. I'm going to choose keen-eyed for my hobbit. Because I think that seems like a good thing. they got to be able to see, you know, the food and ale around the place. Right. <laughs> yep. See your crops. See all the village um, gossip that's happening. Keen-eyed. Yeah. All right. So I get to pick two. I feel like I'm going to oh, go with oh, shoot, you're right. cunning, because I feel like Ooh. that makes sense with my... Your wit is sharp, and you are ready to use it to your advantage. I feel like that goes with my riddles. Totally. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. That's great. All right. I'm, I'm going with Mary. Aw. Of course. I'm also going to go with inquisitive, because I feel like that's good. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really leaning into my, my big dumb dwarf here, so I'm going with fierce and proud. Oh, I love it. Oh, nice. Ooh. I think I'll go with merry and fair. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm uh, attractive even for an elf. And merry, I am... Uh, my spirit is not easily discouraged. I can find oh. light in the darkest of shadows. Oh, that's great. That's lovely. And like even that, you can... There, that's a great example of um, the language that was very deliberately done in this book. Like that's... Like, that sounds like it's directly out of the Lord of the Rings, Absolutely. right? That's so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steph, did you mention the thing that, Frances that Francesco said about the attributes? No, because I, I, I wasn't sure we were going to talk about it at the end. But oh, yes, yeah. I, let's, let's talk about it now. So the strength, heart, and wits thing comes, uh, you know, those are your attributes. And um, we watched a little 
interview uh, with Nerd of the Rings, which is a really excellent YouTube channel. Mm. Um, if you're interested in Tolkien stuff that he did with Francesco Nepotello, the writer, the creator of this game. And Francesco said that um, <clears throat> he chose these as the attributes very deliberately, uh, strength, hearts and wits, based off of a quote that Gandalf said. Um, it's from... The Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, right after, like when they're sitting in Bilbo's house after Bilbo's gone and Gandalf is telling Frodo, like, you need to destroy, like the ring needs to be destroyed in the cracks of Mount Doom. And poor Frodo is like freaking out. And he says, why was I chosen? And Gandalf says, such questions cannot be answered, said Gandalf. You may be sure that it was not for any merit that others do not possess, not for wisdom at any rate. But you have been chosen, and you must therefore use such strength and heart and wits as you have. Mm. And so, like, that is beautiful. It's taken I directly love from that. Yeah. Right? It's so cool. That's it's like, so intentional. I, like, I love when games are so, like, thoughtfully designed yeah. like that. Yeah. That it's not just like, I don't know, um, strength sounds, sounds good. good. Strength is a thing <laughs> yeah. they use in games, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah people are strong. There's intention. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right. So now that we've gotten our distinctive features, the next step and the last step that comes from your culture is your name, name and age. Oh, um, bless and... this book for putting names in here. Yes. Right? God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, love it. Yeah. And as a GM, whenever I need to come up with an NPC name, I just go to the, the culture and I just grab a name from the list and it makes things so much easier. I have yet to make an elf named Lamp Mick. Door, desk face so this has been quite <laughs> that's <cool>. great <laughs> that's great <laughs> oh no okay oh these are great names i'm gonna use i'm gonna use names from from here because i think that's fun do elves get last names yes yeah elves i'm sure jude has a whole episode on this they have like mother <laughs> names and father names and then they have a name that they get like later in life that describes kind of something cool that they did so like oh. there's a lot of names you can choose from <laughs> okay yeah that's interesting because when i was looking through i saw the hobbits have a uh, uh family names mm -hmm. which makes sense you know bill of baggins and and whatnot yeah um and and i know family and and whatnot is super important to the hobbit culture and everything but like exactly uh, and then the men of brie have family names listed there too but all the other ones do not which is really interesting yeah i think like i think the the way that elven names work is that like your mother name is sort of used at a certain part of your life and then your father name is sort of used at a certain part of their lifespan and then their kind of assumed name is used you know what i mean so yeah. it changes so i think like you depending on the age of your elf right like what what age of tolkien's land were you you know when are you a super old elf or are you kind of a newer elf mm -hmm. right um you can you can choose that for yourself which is kind of neat if you want to i'm <laughs> these names for the hobbits are charming a f I'm going to be called <laughs> Gilly Goodbody. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to go with Knob Heather Toes. So, <laughs> oh, oh yes, Knob Heather Toes. Knob Heather Toes. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I'm going with a Laurelin for my elf. Ooh, that's oh, cool. I love that. Yeah. I. Oh yay! I had picked one. I'm actually going to change it. My dwarf's name is. Tarifa. Dwarf McDwarf face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I decided. I decided I wanted to make a female dwarf. So I Im originally picked a male name, but I'm going to choose a female name instead. So I'm, my dwarf's name is Drifa. Drifa. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, we're about to see our first female dwarf in the Amazon series, The Rings of Power. Can't Ooh. wait. Yeah. Who's actually from? Uh, who is a real canon character named Disa, which is dope. So that's oh boy, very nice. I'm excited. <laughs> Did you say your name is Laurelin? Laurelin, yep. Oh, that's so cool. That's one of the names of the two trees. Uh, if uh, The Atherbeth logo has these two trees and the gold oh. one is named Laurelin. And that is where the sun comes from. So it, that's a perfect name for your shiny, beautiful, oh, lovely. happy dwarf. Yeah. Or, sorry, not dwarf. Elf. <laughs> Elf. <laughs> close, Elf. Close enough. <laughs> that, that'll that'll wrinkle some feathers in the fandom. Can you imagine? 
<laughs> this if we haven't already, this, I mean, <laughs> doesn't know what the dwarf is. Yeah. Um. So, so just for my record, Steph and Amelia, what were your names again? Uh, Knob Heather Toes. <laughs> <laughs> How could you forget? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my name is Gilly Goodbody. Oh, these are such good Knob. names. I love this Knob. Is <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, that with the uh, the silent K? No, N O B Knob. Oh, amazing. Oh, wow. Even better. It's in the book. Yeah, you pay that letter. We don't need a silent K. Get that right out of here. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name again, James? So my dwarf's name is Drifa. Um, and I'm actually going to add. So one of the things like we know from, you know, like Balin son of Funden, that they're big into like, this is my name. And then instead of having a last name, it's your this person's kid. So it's Drifa, daughter of Gisla. Oh, awesome. Nice. Gisla. Nice. I'm writing that down just in case I need to contact Gisla about any bad mm-hmm. behavior <laughs> mm-hmm. that we see along the road. <laughs> so right. we were talking a bit about age as well here. Mm. Um, and, and elves are immortal. Um, but right. this particular b- batch of elves, if seems, um, well, first of all, they, they quote unquote reach adulthood. Uh, within the Elven Society at the age of, uh, you know, the the spry age of 100. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And uh, you don't see many adventuring Elves of Linden because after 300 years of age, they have a mighty need to travel west uh, mm-hmm. out, out across the seas. Right. Um, so I was thinking, I don't want to be close to 300 but I don't want to be close to 100 either. So 200 um, it is. <laughs> no, I was thinking like like uh, 147. Great. Hmm. Yeah. 14. Not 169. So like, no. I mean, you can go. You can even go harder if you want. So Kirdan, your like uh, the the boss of Linden, I think around the time of Lord of the Rings, he was like 7,000 years old. Remember, you can live like thousands of years if you want to. So, but yeah. I like the idea of you being like a baby elf. Yeah. yeah. Like an, an elf born in the like the twilight of the third age is so fascinating because they, I don't know, they won't like, there's, yeah, you may not, yeah, you haven't maybe felt that call yet. I like that. You're still very much planted in, mm. in Middle Earth, right? That's cool. Yeah, exactly. And, and probably would explain why she is going out uh to to see middle earth before you know that calling hits yeah i love that yeah that was the thing from the books right like isn't there a part where legolas is like oh crap i heard seagulls now i need to go now i have this unquenchable desire to go west right isn't that a thing it's a thing there it is there's different i mean you know there's different like kind without going too far into the weeds there's different kinds of elves and different kinds of elves based on like when they woke up and whether they came back and did a thing and went over here and blah blah blah. but what one thing that it says about um one group of elf that i wonder if you could kind of say for all things is that the sound of the, the whole world tolkien's entire world the universe was created when the god the, when god quote unquote whose name is eru iluvatar made this music right so he made this fancy music and from the music sprung the universe and the world of arda and everything so they it is said that the the, the purest way for you to hear the music of Eru is to listen to the sounds of water because mm. that's where that's where those that song still lives. Um, and so a lot of elves, uh, or at least specifically the Teleri, but other elves, I feel like as well, you could argue, you know, are hearing are, that's the closest they can be to their to their God, right, is, is hearing the waves and and sailing back to Valinor in the West. Mm-hmm. So maybe. Yeah. So maybe that's where that comes from. Mm. That's very cool. So imagine then think about Círdan as a character. Remember, his job was to make the ships that the elves used to sail over the sea, right, and back uh, to to their land of Valinor. Um, so he he is literally like on and like Linden, the Great Havens is on the coast. So that guy is a million billion years old. He's like lost a lot of his friends. 
right, by the end, by this point in the third age. And he's constantly being called home, but he won't leave because he wants to make sure that everybody else can get home first. And like, that's so beautiful and sweet and touching. And I mm-hmm. don't know. I just think that's great. Yeah. I think it, then you position Laurelyn, your character, Ryan, like in that. Wow. That's that's really cool. I love yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love Kieran. I know. I just got I just felt a little pang. <laughs> like I got a little emotional when you were talking about him being, you know, the last one. That's really. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty. Tolkien. I don't know. He just gets you. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's part of the reason why I'm very excited for this Amazon show coming out, uh, it, because it is going to expand the world so much, and there are so many wonderful stories to tell and characters that are just waiting for everybody under the surface, like in the Legendarium, that now everyone's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, be able to see and be more accessible, which I think is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huzzah! What? else do we have okay so i think i've done all my things yeah yeah Yeah. what do we do next so the next thing so now that we've done that the next step so we've we've essentially built from our our culture the basics of these character so the next thing that we add on top of this is the calling um Mm. a calling is basically your starting drive the reason that pushes you out of your comfort zone to become an adventurer um it's I'm reading this right out of the book. It's not meant to represent a profession or a trade, but the sum of their ambitions and aspirations that put them on the road. So you can kind of think of it a little bit like a D&D class, but rather than like cleric, where it's like, I am a priest and I do, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is this is the the calling, the thing that drives your character um, okay. rather than like, this is my job. And so there, what are the choices? Yeah. So there are six callings listed in the book. They are captain. Which is, you know, essentially like a, a leader of people. I think a great example from the book would be, uh, you know, Aragorn. Uh, I think would fall into this, um, mm-hmm. or even B- Boromir. Well, yeah. maybe not. Never no, absolutely. Maybe um, champion, which is somebody whose focus is, you know, opposing the shadow, um, you know, by strength of arms, like a warrior, um, you know, some somebody, you know, something like that. Messenger. This is uh, somebody who's driven by connecting the people like you're you're driven to connect the people of the free people of Middle Earth. It's your duty to travel to distant lands, carrying tidings and warning people of the coming danger. Scholar, which is, you know, relatively self-explanatory. This is a person who's driven by the desire to get more, uh, you know, to learn, to get more information, to collect songs and tomes and things like that. Treasure hunter, somebody driven by wanting to to get the storied treasure of old that is out there in the world. Uh, and then warden, which is somebody who's um, driven to protect those who can't protect themselves. How is that different than champion? So it's so a champion is somebody who is, you know, a, a warrior who is driven to proactively go out and fight against the forces of, of of darkness a warden Mm -hmm. i think the this from their description this sounds like it's perhaps a little bit more geared or or would typically be more geared towards somebody playing like a ranger who's sworn Mm -hmm. to you know give up civilized society to go out into the wilds and protect the people who you know um who who are out there who may not even know they're in danger i think the from what they're writing here in the book it sounds like you know um, the the rangers who are guarding the borders of the Shire, the hobbits don't even know that they're being protected. But you know, they would th- those rangers would sort of fall into this this calling. Cool, I like that. That makes a lot of sense. A champion is more like I'm here doing a thing for you. You're welcome. Yeah. And a warden's like I'm just in the background. I'm don't even don't even look at me. <laughs> don't even, I'm I'm just here. I'm just here. <laughs> Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Ooh. I wonder what I should be as a hobbit. I mean, I could be anything. I guess. Yeah. Meet Morp. What are you going to do as a dwarf? Do you know? I mean, the easy choice would be just to go something like champion. Just keep, just stay on the dumb, you know, like charging into <laughs> battle uh, aspect. Oh yeah, sure. I've got one in mind for myself. Ooh, what 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 are you thinking? Um, I was between messenger and warden. Hmm. And I think Warden would be more interesting. Oh, yeah. Totally. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Because then I can, I can pick two uh, 
things that I was kind of looking at before as favored skills, and that'll be interesting. Plus the whole, like, like, so the warden's like, yeah, the protection against the shadow. So you kind of know more about the shadow than other people. Totally. That makes perfect sense. I like that. Ooh. Warden is such a cool yeah. idea. I love that. Someone in the shadows, like, yeah. Taking care of business every day. <laughs> I'm not sure what I will choose. I want to choose last because I want Amelia to be able to choose first. Um, So many good options. I know. What are you going to do, Amelia? Do you know? I kind of, I'm kind of feeling messenger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes really a lot of sense for a person from Bree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of road access and people passing through, mm -hmm. giving messages, getting yeah. messages. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, cool. That sounds good. All right, I'm gonna go for treasure hunter then, because I feel like a hobbit. I I'm like shiny things. Mm. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm just gonna keep going straightforward, no nuance, champion. Okay. So we got one person that knows how to fight. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Thank goodness. Uh huh. All right. So. so, from your calling, we get a few things. So, you get two more favorite skills. There should be a list of ones to choose from. You pick two from that list and mark them as favorite. Um, oh. Like for the champion, I get to choose between athletics, awe, and hunting, and then mark those as favorite. Okay. And it looks like for warden, I can choose between awareness, healing, and insight. Um, and I have, I have zero points in insight right now. So I kind of just chose healing and awareness healing because I wanted it. I've got one point in that. So this will help me heal better anyway. And then awareness, because I've already got two points in it. So I figured might, might as well be really good at it. That makes sense. The one thing I will say, if you have zero points in a skill, uh, you can still make a roll for it. You would just then roll only your feet die, the D12s. Um, and even if your target number is higher than, than a 10, um, you can always roll a Gandalf rune on the feet die, which is an automatic success. So it mm. might sometimes pay to mark a skill that you don't have anything, uh, any points in as favored, because then you double your chance of hitting a Gandalf. Oh, oh that's wow. fair. So I can choose between courtesy song and travel. Ooh. Um, I don't know. I picture this character as somebody that, like, doesn't really want to go anywhere. So I don't <laughs> think I'm going to pick travel. I, nice. I think I'm going to pick courtesy, actually. I already have three there, but I'm going to go ahead and pick it anyway. Ooh, nice. super courteous. Very courteous. Super. Uh, for mine, uh, for the treasure hunter, you choose between explore, scan, and stealth. And I already have stealth as a favorite skill uh, from my heroic culture. So I'm going to go ahead and choose explore and scan. Ooh. Even though I have no dots and scan. So that means, as you just said, James, I would get two of the feet die. Yes. Okay, cool, 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 And cool, you cool. would take the higher. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And scan is an interesting one. I mean, scan basically in this game sort of takes the takes the place of like an active perception role. Scan is you deliberately looking for something um, versus uh, I think there was another awareness, which is your sort of passive uh, perception. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So physics. So, so searching stuff out is scan. Gotcha. Yeah. Important for a treasure hunter. Cool. So after Oh, and then, yeah, so for me, I got to choose between uh, athletics, awe, and hunting, and I chose athletics and awe, just continuing to lean directly into my no-nuance warrior character. Mm -hmm. Love it. Awe is, awe is a cool one because it, it's like evoking respect, your first impression, wonder, or fear, right? So that's kind of mm -hmm. cool for a dwarf. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, that like is it. cool. Absolutely. Yeah. We also, from your calling, get an additional distinctive feature. So this will give you, this should give you three total distinctive features. Mine is burglary. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I'm good at pickpocketing, uh, pickpocketing, lock picking, and other shadowy ways to get a hold of positions from others. Ooh, mine is folklore. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Ooh, I love that. Mm. I've got shadow lore, uh, oh, which uh, you have uh, recognized that there is a hidden thread unifying most what is malicious, dark, and terrible in Middle Earth. Ooh. And that the thread is thickening year after year. Oh, spicy. Oh. Um, a, a quality shared by the wise of the land. The truth behind this knowledge 
is becoming clearer as time passes. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's really that's, that's a that would be a that's a great hook too to pull your character in. You know. Yeah. 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 And then I think my distinctive so for the champion the distinctive feature is enemy lore, which means I get to choose from a type of enemy that it applies to, and I know more about that. Uh, so this one is really interesting because you can, it kind of gives a little bit like of background to your character depending on which enemy you choose is your your sort of enemy that you know the most about you can choose from evil men orcs spiders trolls wargs and the undead and each of those i think really sort of says okay well in the past you were doing something really interesting and very different um i'm going to choose trolls as my um as my enemy lore Mm. that's dope yeah 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 that's great. So trolls. right off the bat, I have a hook now to figure out why my character would would have been dealing with trolls. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Ooh, what capers did you get into? Mm-hmm. I feel like as a mountain person and someone traveling along the trails of the mountains and then the forest, you're likely to run into like a cave troll or, or mm-hmm. well, yeah, yeah, right. Or or even a, another kind of troll, forest, whatever. Yeah. Those uh, those persnickety Belrog trolls. Oh, that's really bad. You definitely don't want to see one of those boys. Woo! Too hot. Uh, and then the then the really annoying forum trolls. Ooh, internet trolls, Reddit trolls. <laughs> um, actually, yeah. turn them all to stone. I would be uh, like horrible to play with if I had that as my like thing that I knew a lot about because I'd be like, are they trolling us <laughs> to my game master all the time? Do I know anything about them because they're trolling us? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the puns. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then the last and then thing. What we, is the sh- yeah, yeah. So the last thing we get from our calling is the shadow path. And basically the shadow path is like a suggestion of how like. Based on, you say, remember, your calling is what has driven your character out on an adventure. As the shadow, capital S shadow, has more sort of impact on them, um, the shadow path is a suggestion for for what direction they would take as they succumb to the shadow. So, you know, for the champion, for instance, my shadow path is curse of vengeance. So because I'm like, so the champion is driven to, you know, they believe that the way to face to, to defeat the shadow is to go out there and fight it head on. As they become more corrupted by the shadow, by the darkness of the world, their like their desire to use their strength to combat the shadow also becomes just using their strength in ways that are, you know, that, that are harmful and are ways that are hurtful. Mm. Yeah, in the bat in in the later parts of the book i guess not even that later but yeah there's ways to use flaws um so you can go and look up your your shadow path and like i right and then find like ways of using it um i mean obviously you can do whatever you want but um just to give you some ideas so like for mine my one is dragon sickness um which is you know when you it's such a cool one. Yeah. You know, when you're, it turns all gold to ash, right? So like something that, so it's suggesting that I can become grasping. Like if you become grasping, you seek to accumulate gold and precious items above all else just for the sake of possessing them. Or I can become mistrustful or deceitful or, or thieving. Um, so I love that. It's, yeah, it's, it's really very good. helpful. Yeah. yeah. Take a look at Thorin from the end of the Hobbit for a great example. Yes. Oh, a perfect example. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mine is wandering madness. <gasps> oh, yeah. Traveling cool. far might be the duty chosen by a messenger, but it carries the risk of never finding a place to fight for. The road goes mm. ever on and on. It's true, but whither then? Oh, oh that's awesome! That. Nice. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, and, and for mine, I've got shadow path, the path of despair. Mm. Uh, so self doubt is often the way that the shadow chooses to reach the heart of those who oppose it. For they know that the enemy is strong and terrible, and those that they protect are too naive or weak to fend for themselves. Every day they ask themselves, will my strength be enough to prevail? Oof. Or will oh. I drag down the innocent in defeat? Yikes. Oh, my God. <sighs> I love that. That's so sad. I know. Ah, you can Marlin, do it, Marlin. No. 
Don't be sad. It's okay. It's You're enough. <laughs> You're so happy normally. Come on. Is it just oh. a mask? I hope not. I believe oh. in you. I want you to believe in you too. Oh. <laughs> you have to try, Artex. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't no. you dare. <laughs> you just, all of us millennials just got super traumatized. No, content, <laughs> war, content warning. <laughs> I know. Too sad. Never ending story. Yep. So now that we've, so that's what you get from your calling. The next step, so this is your, so pretty much at this point, you know, you, we've kind of got our bog standard characters. You've got what you get from your your culture. You've got what you get from your calling. Um, and were someone else to pick the exact same culture and calling, they would have almost the exact same character as you. So the mm-hmm. next phase is to get, is to use, is to spend experience that you got from your previous life experience. So this is the phase where it denotes you know, the things that you were doing before now have shaped your character and you have 10 experience points to spend to raise skills and combat proficiencies to represent that. So if you go to page uh, 46 in the book, there are two tables. There's uh, skill costs and combat proficiencies costs. And basically you have 10 points to spend to raise skills based on the, uh, based on the costs in those tables. Okay. And this represents, you know, the previous stuff that your character did that has, you know, uh, given them these skills or proficiencies. Mm. I feel like my hobbit has not had a lot of time to use combat proficiencies. <laughs> <laughs> so probably not going to do too much with those. But yeah, there are some interesting skills in here. Could raise up. I'm definitely going to give myself one scan or maybe I'm going to give I'm going to go from one zero to one, which is one point, and then one to two, which is two points. So I'm going to use three points to get my scan going. I feel like as a burglar, I'm going to need that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing for lore. I don't have anything in the lore. So. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I raised my axis proficiency from two to three to really represent, you know, being that, being that warrior. Um, yeah. And then I spent one point to raise my awareness because I think that passive awareness of everything that's going on is important for a warrior. Um, and then I spent three points to raise my enhearten to two. Because I kind of want this character, even though they're they're just like a straightforward like warrior, I kind of want them to be a little bit of the sort of Gimli comic relief dwarf a little bit too. So, you know, to be mindful of the emotional states of the rest of the party, even if they themselves don't have much emotional maturity. Okay, that's, not, that's cool. I like in heart and as a skill, the idea of inspiring others. Yeah. That's really great. I can also see that as like a cap. Yeah, like the, as you say, the champion or the captain or something like that. Could yeah. Be really useful um hmm. i'm gonna take my persuade from two to three which is another three points because i don't know sounds like a good plan Mm -hmm. (laughs) because because why not (laughs) why not (laughs) because i'm not not often right but if you can persuade people into thinking you're right it's fine Mm -hmm. (laughs) everything's fine So I went with, um, I moved my son up to three from two. Uh, so that was three points. And then I moved healing from one to three. Oh. Um, so that was five points right there, which put me up to eight. So that means I had to spend two points elsewhere. I was debating between one point and a couple of skills or uh, something else. But then you were talking about in Harton. And I'm like, that sounds like what I want to do for my character. Mm-hmm. So I went from one point to two in Inhearten as well. Nice. Um, so that way I'm better at that. And that should be 10 altogether. Uh, I spent my points, but I don't remember what I did. <laughs> I just marked some boxes and I counted it. I did give myself some swords. Oh, swords. 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 Oh, I think I, I got some more hunting because that seemed important. Mm-hmm. That is great. And then some other stuff that I don't remember because I didn't use a different color to mark it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm also going to take one in travel because uh, I'm metagaming. I know that it's helpful to have one, at least one of your party to have one in travel or mm-hmm. something because that's one of the, you know, we, we talked about during the journey phase, there's the different roles mm-hmm. you take on. Um, mm-hmm. And one of those is travel. Um, another one is hunting, Amelia. So that's that's yeah. great. Maybe your character is more mm-hmm. exposed to hunting or whatever. Yeah. All right. So the next step, now that we've done our previous experience, is choosing our starting gear. 
Um, basically, like there from our culture, we get a standard of living, but there's not really a sense of having gold to spend to get gear in this game. Basically, you a starting hero can choose one weapon for each combat proficiency they have a rating in. Um, and then your and then you also can choose your sort of favorite selection of armor, helmets, and shields. You just get this essentially for free as as part of being an adventurer. That's great. I love games where you don't have money and then you forget to buy pants and then <laughs> you know, like you <laughs> You spend it all, and then you show up, and everybody's like, "What are you wearing?" And you're like, "Uh, oops." Ah, Amelia the pantsless. <laughs> yep, that's Hello. me. <laughs> <laughs> Your coming is foretold, <laughs> and her legs are very cold. All right, so, all right, so I'm just gonna take a sword, I guess, right? Because mm. I have swords, so I'll just take a wee, a wee sword. It does say here, spear can be thrown. Nice. Just to answer Great. that question. One that's thing. That's awesome. One thing to bear in mind, so you can choose whatever armor you want for your character at this point, but keep an eye on the load rating for all of your, your, everything no. you're acquiring. Yes. I refuse. So, <laughs> is, no. is, is this encumbrance? You can, it's not, well, it's sort of encumbrance. You can only take <laughs> yeah. a load up to your endurance score. And if your endurance drops below the load that you're carrying, you become weary, which is like a capital W weary. And essentially what weary means is that when you roll a success die, one of the D6s, if you roll a one, two, or three, they count as a zero, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Okay. Yeah, you. Be, yeah, exactly. That happens. I have a character who has a lot of uh, armor and I always have to like put my helmet down because... <laughs> Because I get too winded all the time. Uh, I just it's I don't I don't really I don't know if I built I gotta look at that again because I am always weary, man. Life is weary <laughs> on the road. So you can take whatever army you want. If I just like take like a leather shirt, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. One weapon for each combat proficiency. Ugh. Okay. Okay. So I need a bow and a sword. Are you going to name it? Tolkien loves to name weapons, right? That's so fun. <laughs> it, it would have to be a magical sword, right? Yeah. I don't think I could start with a magical sword off the bat. They're, yeah, let's see. What do they have? Short sword, sword, long sword. Sword, sword, sword. There is, probably... so we haven't gotten there yet, but one of the things that we'll do shortly is you'll get something called a reward. and uh, Everybody gets a starting reward. One of the options there is to sort of improve your weapon. So you could potentially have like a, a nicer sword, depending on what you choose later. Uh, so bear that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to go with a great bow because you got to you gotta have a great bow. Heck yeah. It has a load of four. Mm -hmm. And then a lawn sword because lawn swords are just cool when you're an elf. Mm -hmm. Load of three, I think, on there. So in addition to the war gear that you get, which are the weapons and armor that you have, um, your character also just gets traveling gear. This doesn't, like, this is just basically like your traveling kit. It doesn't need to be written down. Uh, it doesn't add any load. But this is just like, you know, your normal clothes, your traveling clothes, blankets, you know, the usual traveling stuff that you would have. Um, and then in addition to that, your character also gets useful items. Um, you get a number of useful items depending on the standard of living of your culture. There's a table that basically tells you sort of what standard of living, of living each culture has. Um, and these are useful items which your character has, which basically if you can come up with, like when you make a skill check, um, if you can say a reason why this item would assist you in that skill check, you get an extra, you know, one die. Um, okay. You know, could be like, oh, I have elven rope. I'm going to make a climbing, you know, I'm going to make it an athletic skill check to climb down from this cliff because I'm using my elven rope. I get one extra D6 uh, when I make that roll. So do we choose a useful item or do we, we or is that prescribed by? So based on your culture, you get an, a number of them. So for the elf, um, for the elves, they get one because their their standard of living is frugal. Hobbits and men of Bree get two. Uh, because their standard of living is common, and dwarves get three because their standard is prosperous. Okay. Oh, nice. And I love gear. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a list of like examples on page 50, but it could be any useful item you can think of. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I think elves have a standard of living of 
frugal. That's right. So that means I get a one for something. Yes, you get one useful item. A one useful item. Okay. And does that have anything to do with the armor? Because I was looking at the um, the male shirt, and that said, see standard of living requirements yes. on page 100. But then I looked at page 100, and there wasn't anything there, except for <laughs> another table of weapons. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, no. Um, okay. I'm looking at page 100 now, too. Um, oh, okay. On page 100, there's an armor table, and it says the minimum standard of living. So if you want to pick a male shirt, your minimum standard mm. of living must be common. And if you want oh, to pick I see a, there. Okay. a coat of mail, you have to be And coat of mail is prosperous. So, yeah. so you can't have that. <laughs> right. I can't oh, have that. No. Sad. Meet Morp. I guess leather corset it is. <laughs> Cors- or is it corslet? Corslet. 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 Leather okay. corset is a different. It's a very different yeah. thing. <laughs> and I think you get that for free as part of your traveling gear. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have one. It's fine. All right. I'm choosing a windproof lantern because that's great. And I like mm. that it's windproof. That's helpful. Uh, and that will help my scan. And I'm also choosing a fine pipe to find comfort uh, from insight. Hmm. Because, uh, you know, you had know, your libations and whatnot, all the vices. <laughs> Helps you feel good. Because <laughs> I get two because I'm common. Mm. I'm common. That's why I chose two. Noise. We haven't calculated load, right? No, not yet. Not yet. Although you okay. can do that uh, at this point because you've chosen your weapons and armor, you can calculate your load. There's nothing else that goes into that? Uh, treasure would, but you, as a starting adventurer, you don't have any treasure. I mean, what about the memories I carry with me, James? What about the friends we made along the way? Yeah! <laughs> They're very heavy. Yeah. So many friends. There's so many friends. So I don't... So wait, my load is only three? I don't under. Oh, wait, no. And three from my load, sure. So six total, that's it? Yeah. I'm, I'm traveling light. Yeah, okay. I mean, when In you my, don't... Just to put it into perspective, my... My warrior from Rohan has a load of 22. So like, he is. Wow, that's quite different. All right. I think a lot of that came from your armor, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mine's 14. So yeah, definitely keep your eye on that as you play. I got a lot See, of weapons. Too sleepy. A weapon. weapon. I'm between two things for a useful item. I only get one. So that doesn't help. But... um. <laughs> Either something to help my son or something to help my healing. Oh, man. Well, I grabbed something to help my healing, so mm. oh, you, you should probably help your song. I should help my son. Yeah. Um, that seems important to your character. Maybe like a like a tuning fork. Like a pitch pipe. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, that sounds good. Would I put that under rewards and virtues? I think or? it goes up in gear, up in the upper right gear. hand. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean upper right hand? I'm on the lower right hand. Traveling nope. gear, that one? Um, I mean, where's well, so I'm using the, the fillable sheet. character sheet. Yeah, yeah the fillable sheet is slightly different. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm on the paper one. Okay, I'm no, going to stick it in fine. traveling gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that one has like some more spots than this one, but that's okay. Yep. Yeah, for my this one's dwarf, easy. I chose... I got three because dwarves apparently are prosperous. So I cho- chose dwarf liquor. Um, which I figure can be used for in Harton. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> a dwarf made compass for travel, uh, and then cleats to be worn when, like, cl- when she climbs up and down rocks uh, for mm. athletics. Nice. Smart. Oh, so here's the part where we calculate our load. Yes. So I just add up my load from my stuff that yep. has load values? Yes. So 13. Um, I don't think i need a shield yeah shields are interesting in this game instead of so armor gives you protection shields add to your parry which makes it basically harder for the enemies to hit you okay <laughs> do i need a helmet i did not because it looked heavy it is pretty heavy isn't it it's a load of they four are on that stupidly heavy yeah. and i don't look good in hats Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't want to cover up that beautiful face that's fair um, Nob is not I a was... hat person <laughs> yeah, I don't th- I don't think Laurelyn would wear a helmet 
That's fair. Yeah, I think that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Too beautiful. Yeah. Too beautiful. Plus, I don't think I don't think she sees herself as a warrior type. Yeah. Um, more like a I'm I'm in over my head, but I need to do this because I need to help people because the shadow is coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I may be good with a bow, but goodness gracious, don't put me on the front lines. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm very much like uh, my mom gave me a list and said, go to the store and <laughs> just got swept up along the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after we've added our useful items and war gear, um, we do our load, which we just did. Okay. Oh, this is, the, this is cool. Um, based on your standard of living, you may or may not get a horse. Um, if you the horses in this game are like obviously horses are a big part of Tolkien, uh, but they have a mechanical ability, like they have a mechanical impact. They basically can carry treasure for you, and mm-hmm. when we go on a travel, they reduce the amount of fatigue that you take. Um, if you are if your standard of living is poor or frugal, you can't afford a horse. Uh, so sorry, Ryan. Um, oh, if you're common, you you bring an old horse or a half starved pony, uh, and if you're prosperous, oh. you bring a decent a decent horse. Where do I write horse down? <laughs> I'm going to put an old. Can I have an old pony? I don't want a half starved pony. And yeah. I also don't want a horse because I'm too short. So can I go for an old pony? I think you definitely can. It's the, the old family pony. Oh, yeah. I'm going to name her Pumpernickel. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have an old traveling horse. gear. Me too. They seem gentle and sleepy. Mm-hmm. Or maybe ornery. Who knows? Maybe. And this one doesn't have nightmares, Ryan. That, I know. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have a horse with nightmares? We did. We did. Um, oh. When we did Deadlands, you had to like roll to give your, like to give my horse a flaw of some kind. And <laughs> so my horse had nightmares. Oh, yeah, gosh. Horse nightmares. That's yep. adorable. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the next thing, and we're almost we're almost through here. But the next thing is you're starting uh, you're starting uh, valor and wisdom. So valor is basically like your reputation; it's your status as a doer of great deeds, and wisdom is your character's understanding and cap- capability for good judgment. As you advance your character through the game, you can spend points to raise your valor and your wisdom. Um, but as a starting character, you start with a one in valor and a one in wisdom, and Every time you get a point of valor or wisdom, you get either a, re- a reward or a virtue. Um, when you increase your valor, you get rewards. And when you increase your wisdom, you get virtues. Um, mm. Rewards are basically like good gear, like um, higher level gear. So remember before I was saying, well, you could have a named sword. If you take a reward that gives you an improvement to one of your weapons, it could be that because your weapon is nicer, it has a name. Virtues are unique abilities and special talents which are gained when you gain wisdom. So if you go to page 51 in the book, because you get one valor and one wisdom, you guys each also get one starting reward and one starting virtue. And they're listed in the tables uh, there Mm. on page 51. So we just choose one of these, right? That's right. Or there are six, so you could roll. Could roll. True. Ooh. Wait, what? uh, One each? Yeah, you get one reward and one virtue. And the rewards being, you know, like close fitting armor, uh, Mm -hmm. armor that's like made in such a way that it reduces its load rating, fell on your like the fell quality on your weapon, which raises the injury rating of the weapon or grievous, which raises the damage rating uh, or keen, which makes it easier to score a piercing blow, um, which is a mechanic in this game that basically like instead of doing damage like endurance damage, when you do a piercing blow, you can you can potentially inflict a wound on an enemy, which for lower level enemies is immediately fatal. Um, or you can inf- improve your shield. And the starting virtues that you get that you can get are stuff like confidence, which raises your hope. Um, there's one, you know, uh, that lets you add to the damage that you inflict from your weapon or raises your endurance, stuff like that. Basically, um, at this level, there's sort of generic improvements to your character. Okay. I think I'm going to take close fitting armor. Um, which adds two to the result of a protection roll. 
uh, for my reward. And then my virtue, I'm going to choose hardiness, raise my endurance by two. Mm. Mm. Ooh, I want to go with mastery. Choose two skills and make them favored. That's awesome. Which ones am I going to pick? Yeah, I was thinking about that one too, but I was also thinking about prowess. Yeah, that could have a big impact. You reduce your an attribute target number by one. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Because there are really no other options to do that in this character creation, right? right. That's kind of mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I'll go to prowess. Nice. Um, reduce my heart uh, from 16 to 15. So I'm now 15 across the board. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I picked keen for my axe, which means uh, I have a piercing blow on a nine plus. Um, Mm -hmm. And I took prowess and I reduced my strength target number by one. So my strength target number is now 12. Wow. Yeah. Super strong. Super strong. Mm -hmm. Mine's still 17. (laughs) (laughs) Not strong. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm a 16. So I feel you. We'll stay in the back. We'll stay (laughs) in the back. It's cool. (laughs) All right. Yeah, I chose close fitting armor because I got to show off the curves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went with cunning make so I could reduce how, how heavy my things are. Yeah. That's so smart. Oh, I mean, the protection. It was the protection. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, that's the last step of individual character creation. Ooh. Um, now we have what I think is one of the cooler parts. So we've done all that. Now we get to do the company creation, which is where we Ooh. like talk about our group, which is okay. super cool. So there are four things that happen in company creation. The first thing that we do is we choose a patron. Um, patrons are characters in the world who have, who like pay attention to like, who take, um, take notice of our group. Sometimes will give us quests. Patrons work with the heroes from time to time. They may have their own agenda. Like, for instance, if you were to choose Gandalf as your patron, he's probably going to send you on quests. He may not tell you why he's sending them on quests, sending you on quests, but they're probably quests that are intended to combat the shadow. Um, versus other patrons, which may have not, like, which may not have an ulterior motive, but, you know, just have sort of resources that they give you. Over the course of gameplay, you can get other patrons, like just through interacting with characters in the world, but there are there are six starting patrons that we have to choose one of. Okay. And basically each patron has, uh, will give you more or less fellowship points. We'll talk about fellowship points in a minute. Um, They give you an an advantage. They give everybody in the party an advantage. Um, And each patron has an agenda, which sort of um, is what they're interested in. And we can use, like if we have sort of an idea of what kind of things we're interested in doing, we can pick a patron that sort of aligns with the goals that we have as a party. Okay. So the the starting patrons listed in the book are Balin, son of Fundin. So this is a dwarf, one of uh, one of Thorin's company from the Hobbit, and his agenda is rec- reclaiming lost strongholds, eliminating enemy lieutenants, etc. The next patron is Bilbo Baggins, and his agenda is recovering lost lore and lost things. The next one is Kirden the Shipwright, and his agenda is rekindling hope, preserving the lore of the and preserving the lore of the ages. Next is Gandalf the Grey. His agenda is warning the free peoples and inspiring them to action. Uh, the next one is Gilrain, daughter of Deerhale, which I believe is Steph, correct me if I'm wrong, this is Aragorn's mom. Yep. Uh, uh, and, correct. And her agenda is fighting the enemy and defending the weak. And then the last patron is Tom Bombadil and Lady Goldberry. <laughs> and their agenda is protecting the land and finding and preserving what was buried. Mm. So do any of those sound interesting to people? Hmm. Why can't I remember who Tom Bombadil and Lady Goldberry so, were? Yeah, so Tom Bombadil, it, it's it's he's a tough one because he was they took him out of the movies. Um, but mm-hmm. he, he is this kind of very unknown weird character who lives kind of outside the Shire in the woods and the hobbits um, in the books uh, come across him and his wife, Lady Goldberry, Mm. who is like a river. They call her the river daughter. She's like a weird spirit. And they are like 
lovely but also weird and creepy and they they help the hobbits escape the barrel whites um like some scary ghosts that they mm. find in the hills um tom bombadil is a either you love him or you hate him <laughs> he's a very controversial goes, figure yes <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> even in Athrobeth, like jude hates him and i love him and he talks like oh be bombadillo i am tom bombadillo <laughs> yeah. he like talks to horses he is like your he is like your weird nature hippie yeah mm-hmm. yeah he's either a hippie or he's an incredibly powerful ancient god <laughs> right that's the thing we you don't know and tolkien didn't really know either so that's amazing people people, people debate what he is is he is he a god i don't know because he can handle the ring and doesn't isn't affected by it which is I very weird him. and I, yeah, I love, love him. Too. Agreed. <laughs> he's so weird. He's great. He's great. It's yeah. just like there's like all this serious stuff happening, and then there's also Tom Bombadil, which like he's <laughs> like. I mean, it's like clear why he's not in the movies because like tonally he's just like doing his own thing. But I yeah. think yes. that we all somewhere in our lives have met a Tom Bombadil somewhere, <laughs> and like An enigma. He's just he's just relatable. Like I get him. I get him. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> And Steph, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, didn't Tolkien create Tom Bombadil as like a children's story that he would like tell to his kids and then he like inserted him into the Lord of the Rings? Yeah, he definitely. Yeah, he definitely has that sort of fairy fan fiction, Mm. like just old man in the forest kind of vibe going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was definitely like sort of for his like a nod for his children. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think like I feel like in the appendix appendix of um peter jackson's movies we hear them saying that they sort of took elements of tom bombadil and some of his like more beautiful lines um, from the books and gave it to like treebeard the ent and other people who kind of are on the same wavelength which i like too so Mm -hmm. yeah so unfortunately he's not in the movies but he is a really weird character in the books Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's great and this this patron that we're choosing is the patron for all of us right yes Yes. this is a patron for our company Okay. Yeah, which is like, that means that there's not really a clear, because of all the other choices that we've made, it doesn't feel like there's like a clear, like, obviously this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It could be like, anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the w- we've got one that favors two callings, the champion and warden, but there's mm-hmm. also warden and treasure hunter. And those are the only two. So it's uh, Gillery and daughter of uh, Diriel and... Mm-hmm. Tom Babadil and Lady Gilbert. Those are the only two that have matching callings With us, for yeah. the most people in yeah. our group. Do either of their agendas speak to speak to what we're interested in? I, th- I mean, I think so. I would say don't worry as much about the favored callings mm-hmm. because I feel like in our own games, like I've never, <laughs> maybe we're not doing it right, but <laughs> I've never really <laughs> used that or or even really heard of that. So, yeah, I, I mean, this is really more of a framing device, right? Yeah, there's. I don't think there's a mechanic there. I think it's basically to say, like, you know, Balin Sandafundan has Captain and Champion has his favorite calling, callings because I think that he's a little bit more of a straightforward, more martial character, um, mm-hmm. you know, versus like Tom Bombadil, yeah. who is, you know, forest hippie. So warden, you know, protecting behind the scenes and treasure hunter makes sense mm-hmm. in those cases. Yeah, I think these are all just sort of um intended to you know if guide you guide the party in a in a direction yeah that makes sense yeah so basically what do we want to do as part of our adventures right i mean and i feel like if some of us are like not super into fighting and stuff like then what why are we doing this you know what i mean like what Mm -hmm. like what important thing happened that made us be like okay i guess i have to Mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly I mean, I think I feel like Gandalf is a very good catch all, warn yeah. the free peoples and inspire them to action. That's uh-huh. like a that's kind and of I also feel like if Gandalf comes and tells you to do something, you kind of like <laughs> have to. Yeah, <laughs> you take yeah. notice. Like, I don't think that you really get a whole lot of choice yeah. there. Yeah, it would be it would be cool to have Gandalf as a patron uh, if we were to yeah. play this, because then you get to interact with Gandalf mm-hmm. a lot. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I think that's what we should go with. I think that makes the most yeah, sense. That sounds great. Let's do that. Perfect. Okay. Yay. Let's let's so we'll sneak into Gandalf's chamber and steal his notes on the rain and <laughs> <laughs> and then take an eagle to Mount Doom and just get this whole thing settled. Right. Yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh. <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> Don't even get us started. <laughs> All right. So just drop it at our... the right point. 
<laughs> We've got our patron. So the next thing we choose mm-hmm. is our safe haven. This is a location that works as like our starting base of operations. And potentially, if we're playing a game that's sort of localized in one area, where we return to after our adventures to recover and rest and sort of do our fellowship phases. Um, mm-hmm. One of the places that they suggest is, you know, in like, in Brie, the Prancing Pony is a great option. Or someplace mm-hmm. in Brie, because Brie is a very central location in Ariador. Um, which I think makes sense for this party. But, you know, if we want it to be something different or unique, we can, you know, obviously choose something uh, something else. And the Prancing Pony, for those who might not be super Tolkien-y, is you've see, you see it in the movies. That's where the hobbits go in Brie. And that's where they meet Aragorn and the scary Nazgul come to find them. Mm-hmm. It's very scary. So just like a nice in. I mean, that totally works for me. I like that. It works with Amelia being from Bree. Mm-hmm. And it's also at the crossroads. So it'll fast yeah. travel us to certain places, which <laughs> is nice. <laughs> yeah. Right. And Amelia, you said your character doesn't want to travel that much. Right. So like. I feel like this know. is where I would be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Oh. And we know Gandalf knows where it is, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's no stranger to the prancing pony. So that's perfect. Let's do yeah. that. Okay, perfect. And then there are two sort of mechanical aspects of our company. So the, the next one is the fellowship rating. Um, basically, the fellowship rating is a numerical value, which gives us a pool of points, which we all share, um, which we can use each session to regain uh, hope. We can spend a point of fellowship to recover a point of hope, essentially. Um, These refresh every session. So it uh, sort of incentivizes us to use hope because we know that we'll be able to recover it. And then, uh, you know, next session we'll have our fellowship rating restored so we can have points of hope to spend then. Um, And basically the fellowship rating is calculated by counting the number of players that we have and then adding any bonus we get from our patron. So four players plus a plus two from Gandalf. So our fellowship points are six. That's our fellowship rating. That makes Yay. sense. Does that go under fellowship score then in the sheet? Yes. Okay. And then in some cases, um, there are virtues or cultural blessings, which may add to our uh, fellowship bonus. But I don't think any of us have anything that does that at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the last thing is the fellowship focus. And the fellowship focus will be something that each of us has. And it's basically another person, another character in the party that we feel a particular bond with. It could be a best friend bond. It could be a romantic bond. It could be a bond of respect, you know, for somebody who looks up to another character. But basically, it's we're all tied together as part of this company, but each character has another person in the party with whom they feel a particular affinity. When a player hero does uh, makes a support action, like gives support to their fellowship focus, um, their fellowship focus basically... Uh, at any point, we can use, if we have an appropriate skill, we can support another player making a skill check. That gives them mm. an extra 1d6. Um, but if you're supporting your fellowship focus, they get an extra, uh, like they get 2d6 to their role. But okay. if mm. your uh, fellowship focus is um, wounded, suffers a bout of madness, or is otherwise seriously harmed, um, we, you, you gain a point of shadow that you can't negate. So basically, like when your buddy gets when your buddy gets stabbed, you feel it too. It darkens your your outlook. Oof. The book says too. I I really like this part for your fellowship focus. It could also be someone who it's like a an empathy thing where it's like someone you sort of pity if they're like w- way weaker than you, like someone you feel mm-hmm. you have to take care of. So it could be like a positive friend, but also sort of like a oh this weakling needs me oh. <laughs> thing, mm-hmm. which I like. Yeah. Now, do you share, James, do you say who your fellowship focus is um, or do you keep it secret? What do you do? I don't think it says one way or the other. <laughs> I think it makes sense to say who our fellowship focuses share are it. and, and yeah. why we would have a focus, like why they would be our fellowship focus. Especially since we're not going to be playing these characters. True. Yeah, true, yeah. true, 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 true. <laughs> Although we should. We should do we should do a one shot and have it on yeah. Aftermath where we play these characters. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. I'm going to choose, uh, if it's okay, I would like to choose Amelia because I feel like as someone from Bree mm-hmm. and I'm from not far off in Hobbiton, we probably have known each other a while. Yeah. And I think I, I think, and I think also, you know, you're, you're not really wanting to go out and I've hobbits are the same. So I feel yeah. like we're kindred spirits. I was going to pick you too. So I feel like that makes sense. Aw, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> 
I forgot. What is your character's name? Her name is Gilly Goodbody. She her. Yes. <laughs> Knob. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> and players are free to choose anybody as their their fellowship focus, even someone who's already been chosen by someone else. So if we like, you know, so that's fine. Um, so whose character um wants to be my secret crush? <gasps> Ooh. Cute. <laughs> man because like any of you three would be like amazing in different ways mm -hmm. <laughs> i feel like almost it has to be the dwarf because elves I'm, and dwarves have such a I weird kinda, yeah. i was thinking background. the same thing yep yeah uh -huh. i would think it would be so lovely i feel like your 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 gal is so gen z like open to everything like let's not, we can do it we're gonna you know yay we're gonna do the world uh so that would be great yeah. if she's so forward yeah. thinking to love and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but but she keeps it secret because um you know there's that uh, traditional elf dwarf head budding mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. so like her culture is ingrained in her brain and she's got kind of conflicting feelings about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's not so out good. to her family yet. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. oh, and I think. I think that Drifa's, so my character's fellowship focus would be Laura Lynn because she has completely friend zoned Laura Lynn. They're oh best no! buddies, but oh she does no! not, when she does not have romantic feelings <laughs> <laughs> that she's aware of, that she's aware of. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my heart. <sighs> All right. I mean, and so now, having chosen our fellowship focuses, we have essentially completed character creation. Like, that was the last Ooh. step. We did it! Wonderful. Yay! Yay, us! Go team! <laughs> Yo-yo! <Ooh. laughs> it's, not, it's not super complicated. It's no, not it's so a lot of, like, crunchy. picking things, and, but, like, you still end up with, you know, something really satisfying, even just yeah. picking mm -hmm. things from lists, like... Yeah. And varied. Yeah. Totally. I've got a really uh, good handle on who this person is. I like it. Mm -hmm. Yay. Amazing. Thank you both so much for joining us for uh, the One Ring character creation episodes. This was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This has been the best. You you guys are so fun. I'm. It's such an honor to be on your show. I love your show. <laughs> and this is just like, I could not be more stoked to be here. So thank you. Mm hmm I'm really sad that we're not going to get to we're not going to get to do anything. I say that every time. Like, I'm sad that we don't get to, like, play with these characters, but maybe someday. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll have to wrangle uh, Jude as, G as Yeah, he can GM run it because he didn't make a character. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, let's start with Steph. Do you want to remind everybody where they can find you online and what you're up to? Sure. Yeah. So I'm again, I'm Steph Midlock. I am from the Atherbeth podcast. You can find us on the web at podcast.atherbeth.com. And you can find us on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Atherbeth underscore cast. So come here for all your Tolkien jokes and uh, Duncan on um, characters that we think are lame. It's really fun. <laughs> and you can find me if you're interested in myself. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the North Four F O U R. And my co-host Jude uh, is Aramidic Jude. And James, where can people find you and what are you up to? Yeah, so I can be found on Twitter at J Pearson, P I E R S O N. Um, I can be found editing Atherbath uh, uh, and GMing. I think we're going to do a third Hobbit Ween episode for this October. So I'll be GM GMing that one. Uh, and I'm also in early pre production on an actual play podcast. So keep an eye on my Twitter for when that drops. Ooh, very cool. Ooh. And in your spare Very time, fun. being married to Steph. Oh yeah, yep. you know, third time podcast and GM. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh boy. Well, thank you again, and thank you to everybody for listening. Please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I don't know. Did you get a chance to watch the the One Ring? Or the, saw, rings of, the Rings of Power The episodes. Rings of Power. We saw the first episode and the, the mention of Linden, like, right away. I was like, I know about that. I know about these elves crossing the, the hey, ocean. I heard about that. I heard about that. Nice, nice. I did yeah, watch both wild. episodes. Um, 
there'll be a new one out now by the time this episode comes out because they come out on Fridays. Mm-hmm. Fridays. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I really enjoyed them. It had, you know, like it was it was a lot of what I liked about the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm really intrigued to see to see what happens, to see where yeah, it goes. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in seeing where it goes. And I I am watching the movie now while also thinking about like how to implement these characters in this game. Mm hmm. So it's like, OK, well, I've, we've got Elves of Linden. We've got, you know, the the dwarves and we've got uh, these these new flavor of hobbits, uh, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah, it's really exciting to like see parts of it that just aren't, you know, aren't the usual like, I don't know. I don't want to be like the same stuff as always because it's I mean, like there's a lot going on, yeah. um, but it is cool just to see some of the like sort of lesser trod mm-hmm. parts of the. Of the legendarium, I'm I'm enjoying it. I yeah, also absolutely. was like a huge Tolkien nerd. So. Yeah, mm. but and I I can easily see uh, a lot of people getting inspired by this show uh, mm-hmm. to actually want to play the game. And uh, from from what we're hearing, like the One Ring, uh, the, especially this version, is like uh, one of the best systems uh, to play. Yeah, this sort of uh, you know adventure in these sorts of characters and. Yeah. Uh, that makes me even more excited wanting to, to actually dive in to play this. So, yeah, yeah, it was a perfect timing for this game. So absolutely. Uh, and we pl- we planned that for real. We did. <laughs> we did actually a little bit. We actually like bit. were a little bit on top of it. But yeah, <laughs> it, it just only mildly in, just landed in the right place at the right time. It did. It did. Absolutely. <laughs> But I'm going to take credit for it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Uh, But before we let you go for the week, uh, we do have some calls to action. Uh, First up, our review bin is empty at the moment. Um, I keep checking. Uh, Nothing new has been there for a while. Uh, We would love to hear what you think about the show. Uh, I have been actually seeing that we've been trending in various countries around the world, uh, including pretty consistently the Philippines, uh, South Korea lately as well. Uh, Canada, of course, uh, Austria uh, mm-hmm. is a name that's up there now. Uh, Spain. Uh, and recently we hit number three in the games category in South Africa. Um, and I think we're still doing pretty well in that category in South Africa, cool. uh, which is really cool. Uh, so uh, welcome to all you amazing listeners from around the world. Uh, it's actually really exciting to see that there's enthusiasm for our show outside of the U.S., um, and we would really love to hear from you. Uh, you know, whether you want to leave a review in English or not, we'd still be thrilled. Uh, we do see reviews from all countries on Apple Podcasts, so no worries about us not catching it. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. Uh, you can also leave reviews on Podcast Addict if you're on Android or Podchaser from pretty much any device with a browser. Every review helps us out and really makes our day whenever we come across a new one. I mean, and we could also attempt to read reviews that are in other languages. We could we could try. Absolutely. Um, if they're in Spanish, I can for sure read them. Oh, well, there so, you go. Yeah. So other possible ways of helping us out, and we are in definite need of some people to, to pick this option for us, um, would be backing us on Patreon. Mm-hmm. We've been a little bit slow in adding extra bonus content lately. Um, thank you to everyone who is still backing us anyway. Uh, I have been undergoing medical procedures for the last six weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, undergoing some anesthesia three times a week. It's super fun. It's my favorite <laughs> new hobby. Um, it's not. I don't like it. Um, but hopefully that will make me feel better, um, which will mean that we can put things out more regularly um, and we'll be able to have more bonus content for you on a regular basis. Um, higher quality content because I will not feel like garbage all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really looking forward to being done with this. It's going to be great. Absolutely. Nowhere to go but up. Um <laughs> But um, because that that personal stuff is winding down, we should be able to get more stuff in there. Um, So 
for those of you who are backing us at the $5 and up level, you will have access to all of that bonus content as part of our secret archive. Um, so that has bonus recordings that we do. Um, sometimes it's Ryan and I playing micro games. Sometimes it is early release episodes um, as Ryan edits them. Um, sometimes it is bonus outtakes. Um, that is for everybody at the $1 and up level. Mm-hmm. Um, so all kinds of good stuff in there that we're hoping to get more and more of now that I am feeling like a human. Mm-hmm. Um, so absolutely check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash character creation cast. If you have the ability to spare a little bit toward helping us uh, afford the all the added costs of making this super awesome show that we are very passionate about. Um one of the perks, too, is that we will thank you personally right in one of our, our closings, like right now, like we're going to do right now. Mm-hmm. This this part right here. I, I'm ready. You, t- you too, could be a part of this. <laughs> um, we would love to add your name to the list. So, you know, just think about it. What would it sound like if my favorite podcaster read my name out loud on every episode? Well, it would sound like this if this was one of your names. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant, for your continued support as our first ever patron. Mm -hmm. And Eric Bunce, thank you as well for your continued support. Uh, Yes, Eric, I saw your photos of your family at Ren Fair this last weekend, and you all were adorable, and I just want you to know that. It's my, my very personal call out. <laughs> you all looked very cute. Um, David, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus, thank you so much for your support. Matt Newton, thank you as well. Daryl Holiday II, thank you for your support. Shadim Cabal, thank you as well. To the Shyest Barbarian, thank you so much for all of your support. Benjamin Sweeney, thank you. Lorcan McGinnis, thank you so much. Rob Fletcher, thank you so much. And Kevin Brown, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our future patrons. Uh, We wouldn't be able to make this show as easily without your assistance. And we truly appreciate your generosity. Uh, Coming soon, we'll actually have another bonus actual play of the both of us playing a game called Summer Break, uh, where we play as kids fighting a monster from our own tree fort. Uh, oh, this yeah, one was really de- that. Yeah, yeah, this one was super delightful. Um, uh, just just a fun, uh, quick game that uh, uh, I, I think I would I would play again. Uh, given yeah, it chance. was cute. I loved it. Yeah, I liked I it a lot. It. Mm-hmm. That is all we have for today's episode. Next week, we get into our discussion with Steph, with Steph and James and some really phenomenal fanfic, as usual. Um, it's, it's a really good episode. These were, so good. these were just so much fun to record. So good. Um, so until then, stay safe, everyone. Drink some water. Relax your shoulders. Unclench your jaw. Take some deep breaths. Keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Amelia Antrim, and I can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning or on my other podcast, Garbage of the Five Rings. Our other host, Ryan Bolter, can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast it originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us, under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by the absolutely fantastic Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game system used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much, much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, 
We find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. Campaign Skyjacks takes place in an original setting inspired by folktales and classic adventure fiction. James D'Amato leads Liz Anderson, John Patrick Cohen, Tyler Davis, Johnny O'Mara, and in recent episodes, Nathan Blades, as they tell a tale of daring sky pirates, giant birds, and the terror of a cursed sea. It's funny, dramatic, and at times emotionally devastating. Search for Campaign Skyjacks or James D'Amato on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.